Pattern. This is just one I've made up. Uh, it's a good colour combination. It's something you can try. I get asked quite regular about streamer patterns. You know, it's, there's one of them here. I'm going to be tying this fly here. Uh, the only difference is I'm going to put black peacock head on the top instead of red. But I hope you enjoy the tying it. But anyway, the hook I'm using, this is a 3-0. It's a partridge streamer hook. It's rather large, it's quite big. You can get them all different sizes. Now I'm going to put down a layer of thread along the shank and I'm using UTC thread and this is fluorescent fire orange. Now round the thread until I'm in line with the point of the hook and then we tie in a silver braid it's just a basically white silver braid and we tie this in about 45 millimetres from, the, from that point and tie it in with the thread this is going to be the tag area so wind it up touching, you want the thread turns touching and then, quickly, just take the thread up to about the head length away. And then, what we do, we tie in, a th this is a, a yarn, it's a uni yarn in Chinese red. All I'm going to do is start it, and tie over the thread, or sometimes it may be easier just to finish it, be tighter probably. Do that. And then basically start the yarn like you would do as I say the thread, just at this point here. And then when it touching and all the way down, it's forming the body. Keeping the waist piece there so you don't, don't cut it away, it'll help you to build the body up. Now at this point about a Maybe a couple of turns away from the tag, I'll just trim away the waist. And then I'm going to head all the way back up. It's best to hold the shank as you wind, it makes it much quicker and easier when it's bouncing around. If you don't hold it, it just moves around too much. At this point, what I do is tie in. Just I'm using a uni thread in black and eight oh tie one and then wind over the thread down to the yarn, remove the base piece, and then just basically tie the yarn off like you would do a if you were winding up a floss and tying off. Get three or four turns in there. that away and then bring your braid up first forming the your tag wind it up try and put a wee set of taper into it by over just doing a turn over one, or, one another so that it builds up onto the, the body and then rub the yarn all the way up to this point here across your thread and then what finish nice and tight Trim away the excess, and then at this point, I always put the wax on the thread, and then back up. It's your tying area for your winging, for your for hackle and such. 
You see, it balances nice. The braid's really nice and easy to use. Now, the to build the wing up, the, the material I'm going to be using, this is this is silver badger and a white and cape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a feather from the right side and the left side. So you get that natural curve. So one of the larger ones. And I'm the same length if you can. By taking one from either side it gives you that natural curve. And they'll meet and sit better on the fly. So we check just to see what they like. When you press the feather here a wee bit, it's just a wee bit twisted, so if you put your nail on it and press it, you'll get it sitting flat. Get your length, I would say a good, say around about an inch by. Just make sure the tips are exactly in line. Open out the area and then remove the fluff where you're going to tie it in. Sit it on the top. I usually come in with two or three loose turns so that I can position the feathers at this point. Oops. And then here. Now if you're not if these don't sit right for you you can go back. Yeah, that's not too bad. I usually make sure they're, they're not going to move, we can down and come back up a bit. But leave these stems just now. And then get the jungle cock. I want two long eyes. Two of the biggest ones you can get off your cape. Let's see how they're sitting. I'm going to try and get them obviously the same length. Just like they did with uh, your badger. Just look out and see how they're going to sit. And I want this towards the back of the, the hook. Again, just open out the area where you're going to tie it in. Now we've got both feathers here. You can tie them on individually if you want. You can basically come in together, hopefully. If they're going to sit for you. Something you can't predict sometimes is how these feathers are going to sit. A couple of loose turns, as I say, to get them started. Let's have a look. So you can move them around once you're happy. Like just now I'm fine. Just come in and make sure these are tied in. Hopefully not move. Now I'm going to put some dyed red badger. It's the same capes, just a white neck, cock neck. And again, I'm going to take a right and a left side. Same length. Again, you're crossing your fingers, hoping these are going to sit right for you. And I don't want these too long. And I've lined them up again, just as I did at the beginning. Make sure the tips are lined up here. Get the length, which is quite short actually, not too long. Just to the white part of the jungle cock. And again, open out the, that area where you're going to tie them in. Now I'm going to individually tie these on, so I'm just going to sit. I could probably get away with tying them on together, sorry. But that first couple of turns loose. So you can see how they're going to sit. This just adds a bit of colour to the under the wing, the under wing. To check the length. That looks okay. Again, just tighten up. At this point we trim away the excess part of these feathers. Now the Wax your thread again, gives you plenty of grip. Take your thread all the way down and back up. Don't be shy of a head on these flies. And there we are, they should be nice and tight at that. Just, you 
can move them around to get them to sit the way you want. Once these have had a swim, they start to, they'll sit nice for you. So they will. Now I'm going to add a throat of white bucktail. So white bucktail here. You really need the long, quite long here, because I want it to come at the back of the hook. Cut it as close to the tail as you can. And all I'm going to do is just slightly open out the fibres here and take away the some of the rubbish at the bottom. I'm going to stack it. Tips first into the stacker. Tap it on your desk. Let's see what quick look. I'm going to have to go back and give it another a wee bit better. You can always go, I mean if you're not happy with it, you can always go back. Sometimes they're a bit stubborn. And these ones are. Usually caused by the wee bit of grease on the actual fibre. See so the length just to the, the back of the hook. I'm just going to sit like pinch and loop couple of turns just to see how it's going to sit oh, it's okay now keep your fingers on that area and don't let the, the fibres come round tighten up and then some arrow coming in trimming away the waste tidy up Nice and tight with the thread turns. Using the thread as a way just to build up, tidy up the head area. So you look. That's fine. Then I'm going to get a golden pheasant crest here. Now this one I've dyed yellow just to give it a bit of a boost. Just so. So you take one of the smaller or medium side feathers. We quite look. Now I'm taking these straight off the fe off the as you see the skin. Now what I'm doing here is just I'm actually running my nail on the underside. Just to get the shape I want. Now I want that towards the tip of the, the hook tied underneath. Then I could press the area where it's gonna tie on my nail. And then take away fluff really at the bottom. And then come in. A couple of loose turns. Just position it so it's in the right centre of the, the bucktail. In line with the, the shank of the hook. Looks okay. Tighten up. Okay, and I'm thread turns all the way down. Come back up. You can break this off. And there we are. And then, golden pheasant. This is a skin dyed hot orange. Now I'm going to use two of the, the rump feathers. So I'm two of the top, well, the ones at the top, which are quite, slightly bigger. They've got a lovely colour that comes off them. I love the colour of them. So I do. And I'm going to use these as hackles. Now I'm going to put, have to put two on. Just to get to sort of build out or build that area up. So just remove some of the fluff. Open out the feather to the tip. Catch this on the side. With the front of the hackle facing myself. And then trim away the waste. Now it's important to put a bit of wax on this just to make sure you get the grip. And then I'm just going to wind this on. You could just put these on the sides if you want it, but I'm just going to wind them on. You're not going to get many turns, that's why I'm using two. If you haven't got these feathers, you just use a hackle if you want. Now, as I say, I'm no expert on these flies, I'm just as a fly tire, I love just to fiddle and try things. See how they go, and if you can learn some of the 
if you can get something out of this, then fine. My next one. The exact same thing. Normally, at times I'd fold back the tips here, but I'm just going to leave them flat. Just plenty of room to tie in, so. Just draw these fibres back and then. You'll see how it fills it up a bit better. Just nice, I think. It. And the colour of these, the length of the fibres are ideal. I'm just going to go back. Just, just caught a few of the fibre there. You can get. You don't need to get that caught. You just, you just take the thread turns, or wind an extra wee bit. Because I'd rather miss those fibres and catch the stems slightly further round. You know, I'll show you. What I mean, so that there's a bare stem there. If you can see it, and then I'm. Put a 90 degree bend into the stem, which helps to keep it, or keep these turns nice and tight. Turn this away. And again, wax onto your thread, tidy up. Always nice and tight. To see how these are sitting. See, I always like these to have a wee kind of swim. They get a nice shape. There's the arty side of it. I mean, that's the fun about tying your own flies. You can... I mean, these are fish, to be honest with you, but the the thing is, it's a bit of fun as well, tying these. And you can collect them. See, they're sitting there. It's fine. Now, going back to the same skin, the golden pheasant skin. And I'm going to use a couple of the bigger feathers. The Basically these feathers are the, the breast feathers. There we are. Uh, they're naturally red but these have obviously been dyed with the rest of the skin. Just again, one the same size. Which, which makes sense. Now I've taken one from either side. See how these are going to sit. That one's slightly twisted, so go back to get one I want, one that's got that nice shape. That's a bit better. Just line them up, get the tips lined up. Just open out the area where you're going to tie it in. That point there. I'm just going to remove the fluff. Now, just to show you, I'll tie these in individually. Obviously, the one on my side, one on your side, slightly into the wing with these. And start to build up that nice shape. A bit of moisture into the fingers. Get that nice curve. Get that nice loops apart. Once you're happy, you can trim away these stems. Hold your feathers, sort of moving around. And then again, tighten up. Now, wax onto your thread. And then down. You'll have to come, these stems are quite thick, so you really got to be tight with the turns. Make sure they're going to move. I'm just going to get them down a couple of times. I mean that's a nice fly, it's sitting itself. You could stop at that even, put some jungle cock on it. Now I'm going to be tying in some, basically this, on the original one I tied, I used some bleached and dyed uh, peacock kettle. But I've got none, none left, so I'm going to have to use another colour. In this case, this is dyed black, and uh, I'm just going to tie it in. Take five strands out of five. 
and line them up by bringing them 90 degrees from the stem and tear them off. Now there's a broken one there so that's why I tore off a couple of extra. I don't want the broken ends. Let's see how they're all lined up. And then what I do is just run them through my fingers just to see how they're going to sit. And obviously make sure they're all the same length. They all seem to want it set that way. So I usually just run my nail under at this point here. Now I want it to the back of the hook. Just that point there. Catch them on the top. A wee bit of moisture just to get them to sit. Looks okay. Once you're happy, tighten up. Then I'm going to carry on, put on some sides. See this thing. That's okay. And these are some wood duck, small wood duck feathers. Just get two together. Just get the length that I would like, not too long. Then basically open out these fibres to the point, make sure the ends are in line. And then remove fluff from either side. Now I'm going to tie these on individually. So I can get them in the right position. Just look at the length. I'm not happy to go back. What that nice shape. So I say you could maybe spend a bit more time preparing these feathers, but I'm just taking them straight from the packets. So just to show you that you can do it, you can hopefully get them to sit with an actual shape. Tighten the lengths. Looks okay. Let me tighten up. Once I'm happy, again always tighten up. And then trim away. Try that one. Wax your thread. Keep a hold of the hook because it will bounce around a bit. And just tidy your head up. And finish off with, well, I'm going to use some jungle cock. Two eyes, two smallish eyes, not too big. Try and get two, get, I'm going to take one from either side so that the, you get that again, that natural curve in the feather and it will sit better for you. Just line up both jungle cock eyes. Look at the length you would like. Looks okay. And then open out the fibres to where you're going to tie them in. And then, so, so a loose turn or two. Align and practically line with the the wood duck. Again, just loose turns at first. Get them in position. See where you like them there. It's okay. And then you'll cock at it. That's fine. Again, I'm just going to take the thread down. You can break these off at this point. You get keep hold of the eye. And then tidy up. And I'm just going to go up and down zigzagging the thread, which it's much easier to get it to sit the way you want by doing this. It will not slip the same. And you can again, you can change change the head a wee bit. You can you tie in the same wool that I used in the body. And then just build up a wool head. Nice and tight. 
It's tight on like a piece of floss, just imagine that the head's actually quite big. Just gonna draw back some of the f fine fluff of the, the wool, which can be a bit of a pain. See how this is sitting. Catch it underneath. Let's just check at this point that you've got it sitting where you want. And it's nice and tight. Let me just wax my thread at this point. A few turns in there. And then just take your time tidying your head up. Making sure it's nice and neat. Looks not too bad. It's a bit of work in one of these flies, I know, but they're a bit fun to tie. And then, whip finish. And again, I'm just using the whip finish to tidy up. The head area. Now for speed I'm going to just use some a UV resin to set the head so you can see it finished. I've got some of the resin on my desk. And then it's the matter coming in. Spread it around, try not put too much on first. You can always add another layer on if you want. Best to build it up, it just makes it a better fly if you do that, or a better head. Give it your torch. There'll be fibres here, I'm sorry, trim away. And then finish off with very fine, a fine clear varnish. All the way around. And there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. And that's just a in a streamer pattern. Hopefully you get some from it. You see it looks certainly looks the colours are nice. <laughs>